Hello, <laughs> my name is Filip Hracek and I'm going to talk about Draw Vertices, which is a not very well-known Flutter API for drawing stuff on the screen very fast, uh, basically. It's powerful, but also pretty hard to wield, uh, so that's why this talk even exists. But before I start talking about the API itself, I want to motivate this whole talk. This is the first app that I ever built in Flutter, actually. Uh, it, it is called Sci-Fi UI, and it was my exploration of how can we use Flutter's uh, openness and power to build UIs that are not standard, that are very custom. And I, I was always in love with science fiction user interfaces, and I thought, oh, I want to build something like that. Right. These days, I'm no longer at Google, you probably noticed. Uh, I'm working on a game, a desktop game, that is in Flutter, and that basically the whole idea of the game is that you have this science fictional uh, user interface and the, um, the fantasy that the game fulfills is that you use this science fictional interface um, uh, in a meaningful way. It's not just fluff on the screen, everything in that screen, on that in that UI is, is interactive and is useful for you. So my goal is to build an interface like these, like the ones that you see in movies. And we're, in movies, they're obviously not functional, they're not interactive, they are made by um, big uh, companies of people who specialize in this kind of stuff. And I just love that, and a lot of other people, I'm sure, also love this kind of stuff. You you have blogs that are like literally just about science fictional UIs or FUIs, as they sometimes call it, call it, which either means futuristic UIs or uh, fictional UIs. In any case, they are amazing. They look really cool, and I want to build them in Flutter, uh, but interactive. I already have some prototypes of these widgets and of the game itself. And as you can see, they are the game and the prototypes are not very nice yet. <laughs> you know, they are, they are very rough, they're prototypes. But what I already see or what I already understand is that if this is going to work, I need to draw a lot of things, a lot of stuff on the screen every frame and all of that needs to have the ability to change. The sci-fi science fictional interfaces are always moving. They, there's a lot of visual interest uh, made by these animations. Though, although those animations are often simple, uh, it's, the, it's the fact that everything kind of moves uh, either smoothly or kind of blinks and flickers. That's what makes uh, the science fiction UI tick. And that's what I want to build. And that's why I need to squeeze the last, last amount of juice out of Flutter. I need to make it as performant as possible, or that, at least that's my goal. And that leads me pretty straight <laughs> to, to things like uh, building my own custom painters, uh, working with canvas and working with draw vertices and draw points and draw row points and and all these like little well-known little known apis on canvas so let's dive in all right so what do you see here now that this window that's um that's my comparison kind of widget or uh i guess a, a whole app right and right now, what you see on the screen is something that probably anyone who's played a little bit with Flutter could do by themselves. And that is to have 500. Okay, so I can I can count to 500 here. Uh, okay, 501. 501 uh, little widgets that that are positioned in a stack. I can show you the code somewhere. Uh, hopefully, uh, right here, right? So this is a build method and uh, it's, there's a stack and there's just a size box so that it is 
big enough. And then there are uh, 500 squares, 501 squares, and they are all positioned uh, according to something. And then uh, there's a size box of some, some size. Uh, it's colored by some color and then it's trans rotated 45 degrees. So that's how you get this effect, right? So um, let's, let's just have it like this, I guess. Um, so that, that's what, what's happening here, nothing special. And uh, by the way, this takes every, every frame, every frame it sets state. So all of this is rebuilt every frame, which is kind of crazy. But that's how he, that's one way to implement something like this, right? So the kind of like a snowy effect, right? Um, and it the the crazy thing about this is that it works and it's relatively fast, even though all of these little things are little widgets and not just one. They are all positioned, uh, wrapping a transform, wrapping a colored box, wrapping a size box. These are all changed every frame like you know like rebuild from scratch every frame um, and still it works just fine uh, in fact let me show you the performance uh, probably this is probably best so you can see that all right we get uh, something like average of 1.7 milliseconds per frame and uh, I don't know if how how well you can see this and average 1.3 milliseconds per frame on the raster thread so so that's okay. Sometimes it jumps up, you know, because probably there's a bunch of, um, uh, you know, garbage collection going on. Anyway, so it works, right? And uh, we can see uh, that the, well, you can understand that this is kind of an overkill. If you want something like this, if you want snowing things uh, that are not interactive, it's, it's kind of crazy to use widgets. And again, it's crazy that it works as well and as performantly as we see here, right? But then you may be thinking, okay, so that's cool, I have, um, but I want uh, more snow and I don't actually want to do it this crazy way through using uh, widgets. I want to uh, use canvas. So we can have a look at how that would look like. Uh, so let me show you canvas painter, right? So um, actually, before we, we go there, th let, just trust me that um, a more performant way to do exactly this uh, is through just canvas, just using canvas and path and everything, right? So I can switch this uh, to canvas. This is the exact same thing, also 501 little snowflakes and um, it works a little bit better, uh, but not by much, uh, which again is pretty crazy considering that we are doing here, we're, we're building a whole lot of widgets. Here we're not building any widgets. This is just one widget drawing, drawing um, um, on canvas, right? But then uh, we can use draw vertices, which we'll be talking about today, and that makes things even faster, right? And then we can use draw vertices using the vertices.raw uh, uh, constructor, which is which we we'll also talk about today, and that makes it even more faster. But like you're basically like there's you know what's what's the difference really, you know? Uh, let's up the number of, of snowflakes. So this is a log scale. So I, if I go here, it's already uh, something like 10,000. Let's do 10,000, right? So you have the widget part really struggles here. And I can actually show you uh, if I do, if I just do this, you know, this is using 120% of the CPU. And uh, let me see, uh, some energy impact is 3,400, okay? So just remember that number, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. Um, so I can go to canvas, and now you can see it already goes uh, below. It's, we are not, we're at about 60 frames per second. Uh, we're not losing many frames, um, but we, we are using some, 
I mean, we are losing some or skipping some frames. And uh, the energy impact is, is that 5,000? Uh, 400. And, uh, but CPU percentage is, well, 141. So not, not great, but you can see the difference in speed, right? Then we go to draw vertices, same number, 10,000. Is it 10,000? Yeah, 10,000. All right, so, so uh, you see that, you, did you see that? <laughs> Uh, was a lot of uh, a, a lot better suddenly right um, now you can see that the CPU percentage uh, I don't know if you, if I if I trust it it's going down slowly okay uh, the energy impact is is down definitely and last but not least uh, we go to draw vertices raw and then like the energy impact is you saw that little jump there because we, we switched to um, a different kind of draw mode, uh, but uh, it's definitely down. Like uh, you know, the G the raster thread is not even uh, it's it's not even registering basically, right? And now it's at twenty five percent CPU, and uh, the energy impact is three hundred. Actually, it's. Uh, I saw a lot less. Um, basically, the energy impact is around what like a Chrome window does when it doesn't do much. <laughs> like when you're looking at Gmail and nothing changes, it's about that kind of energy impact, right? If, what I've seen, if you have something big, a big number like this. Um, and to go even further, like we could go to something like do... <sighs> 22,000, right? So that's like literally just like 59 <laughs> milliseconds per frame on the UI thread. It's terrible. Canvas, much better, but but also definitely less than 30 frames per second. It's 14 frames per second. You can see here. Um, it, with widgets, it was something terrible. You can also see memory usage here. Uh, 10 frames per second. This is a um, sliding, sliding window average, so yeah, 10 uh, seconds. Canvas is better, right? And then draw vertices, watch this, 3, 2, uh, bam. Right, now we are skipping some frames, but mostly not. Also, uh, we'll, uh, you can see that things are a little weird. Um, I'll, I'll get to that, don't worry. You can also see how the memory consumption goes way down and then draw vertices raw bam nothing <laughs> we're at 60 frames per second uh, and we are um, about you know i don't know we're very very okay with memory uh, we will ad address the reason why this is happening why we have all these weird lines everywhere this is one of the things where uh, you have to deal with with draw vertices. It would be pretty easy for me to fix this, um, but I just I just thought you know uh, let's let's not let's not dwell on it. All right. So this is this is draw vertices and why you might wanna uh, wanna use it. You know, it could go all the way to one million and then it's it really starts struggling even with draw vertices slow who uh, raw. Uh, but for anything uh, normal, it's, it's it's going to be super fast. So that's draw vertices, uh, and I mean that that's not it. That's that's just like how uh, if you ask someone like, oh, okay, how much faster can you get? Uh, then this is this is the the answer to your question. All right. So now this part of the talk is basically me going through the different stages of. Uh, using draw vertices and later hopefully if I have time draw points as well and kind of showing you because showing you how to use the API by uh, iteratively making something you know um, so to use draw vertices you need to have a custom painter so this is how you use a custom painter this is the app that we're working on there's just a scaffold and a custom paint which uh, shows or which leads to a cust uh, example painter which we will be working with 
this is right now is custom painter that does nothing, right? And then uh, child of size both expand is just saying to custom paint be as big as possible. There's other ways to do it, but yeah, that's that's how it so I, how I do it here. Um, one point or one one tip to uh, to do with custom painters, I see even packages sometimes doing the wrong thing uh, in terms of repainting themselves. So sometimes they have a, they need to use custom paint somehow, right? Because they, I don't know, build something or like show something or render something. Um, but uh, to redraw the custom paint, they will use set state. So they will have like a little set state here or, you know, a ticker or something and they will just or animated builder or something like this and they will rebuild uh, the custom paint widget every frame that's not or every time anything changes that's not the best actually if you look into um, the custom painter um, api docs it will tell you that that's the there's a better efficient more efficient way and that's what i'm using here which is custom painter has a constructor and that constructor takes repaint as a optional argument and then uh, custom painter itself will listen to this listenable called repaint and it will call or redraw every time that repaint ticks right so uh, what, all you need to do is if you have some kind of animation or something listenable, like for example, a change notifier, um, a lot of things are listenable, you can just take it and then send it to the super constructor uh, using repaint. And because I actually use it here, I'm also, I also have it as a, a final field here, right? So this way, I don't need to do anything else. The paint method will be drawn um, every time this animation um, ticks. And it ticks all the time because I have an animation controller here, which repeats. So, <clears throat> but right now, I don't, I'm, we're not gonna use it. We're just going to create... Um, so you probably know how like, you know, in canvas, you can draw circle, for example, and that circle can be in the center and the radius can be radius and the paint can be paint, right? And then if I save, bam, we have a black circle, cool. Um, so the color comes from here, right? I can change the color, but I think, I mean, I mean, probably let's, let's change the color to something weird, like, uh, oh, uh, maybe not. Maybe not something like this. Yeah, that's weird enough, right? So, um, cool, so so we have this. Now, that's just canvas draw circle. That's how, that's how you do it. It's very uh, performant, uh, but also um, not what we want now. Uh, we want something even more crazy, and that's draw vertices. So canvas draw vertices takes vertices, a blend mode, and paint. So we do have paint, the blend mode will just do, for now, we just do um, a, either source or dest. Let's just do source. Blend mode is, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. And then we need to define the vertices. So it will be final vertices, uh, vertices. And now we need to define the mode and other things, right? So vertices is just basically this class that uh, lets you do a, bu a bunch of stuff. And uh, if you wonder wh what am I talking about with when, when I was talking about vertices raw, that's just another constructor called vertices raw, uh, vertices raw, uh, that takes different arguments, but basically is the same as this one, right? In fact, I'm pretty sure this one uh, creates the same things yeah it basically is kind of equivalent it does the work for you of vertices raw but as you saw in the beginning vertices raw because you do it yourself you can be more performant we will start with vertices 
will gain some kind of understanding of what vertices does and how, and then we can upgrade to vertices raw. All right. So vertices raw needs a mode, a vertex mode. Uh, we'll use triangles. So vertex mode is actually pretty well explained here. Uh, in um, vertex, so draw vertices. I guess I should probably tell you what vertices are. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> what are vertices? Vertex is the singular, vertices is the plural, are basically points. They are points on the screen. And what draw vertices does is it takes a bunch of points and then it will draw triangles basically on the screen. And uh, here you can say how it should interpret the points or like what, what triangles it should draw. Um, in a case of triangles, it's easy. You have a long list of points and it's like the first three triangle, the next three triangle, the next three triangle. There are other modes like triangle strip and triangle fan, but actually they are all translated internally into triangles. And uh, I, I read somewhere that, uh, I mean, I, I read in the GitHub um, discussion between the Flutter folks, uh, like implementers of Flutter, that it is actually no longer supported on some platforms in a way that, that they have to do the work themselves anyway. They will like take your uh, triangle strip vertex uh, or vertices and they will do the work to, to rebuild them into triangles. Uh, so it's better to just do it yourself. So this is a long <laughs> way of saying just use vertex mode and triangles. All right, and then the next and the only other uh, required argument is positions, which is a list of offsets here. <clears throat> so let's let's give it three offsets. The first one would be just center. Uh, the second one would be offset. I mean, center plus offset. I don't know, fifty to the right and zero to the up. And another one would be plus offset fifth. I don't know, 50 and 50. 50 to the right and 50 to the top. To the bottom. Anyway, to the bottom, yes. Um, and so if I save now, you can you can imagine how it will look like. If you imagine then this, then you are correct. Uh, so yeah, we could we could do something like 500. Uh, we can we can do anything with this, and it will always do exactly uh, what you could I guess expect, right? So that's triangle. Now if I do another one, uh, what happens when I add another vertex? Nothing actually. Uh, draw vertices will ignore the vertices that don't make up a new triangle. So you, you can just add uh, all these. Uh, let me do uh, something like 500, 500. <clears throat> this would be 50, 50, I don't know. And then if I add the third one, so like this is six vertices now, uh, and I put this one on, um, I don't know, zero, zero. Then I should see Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, do you understand why I didn't see that? Because if you do this, then it's just a line. And so if the vertices are in one line, it will not draw anything. If it's a little bit more, then, you know, it will draw something. And of course, if it's uh, something like this or <clears throat> something like this, then it will draw you know, a triangle. So that that's that's triangles and vertices and all that. Cool. Now vertices also takes other um, other stuff. There's texture coordinates, which we will look at probably later. Then there's colors, uh, which is something that could also trip you up. So let me um, let me do this. 
200 and 200. A bigger triangle, right? And uh, what happens if I add colors? So first of all, if I just add one color, for example, it will break, right? So I'll do the first color would be something crazy like uh, 00FF00. The green one, right? So first of all, yep, it's great because it will tell us that uh, there are not enough colors. Um, we you need to for every vertex you need to assign a color. If you assign a color, then you have to do it for every vertex. So if I add two more of these, the same thing. Now suddenly everything is green, right? All right. So uh, yeah, uh, one other thing that could uh, trip you up is that if I put uh, a different color here. Uh, let's do something more like red. If I save, it will do a gradient. So the if you want a solid color of a triangle, it needs to have all the colors of each vertex need to be the same. The vertices, the vertices will uh, will blend between different colors. So uh, we could do blue here and it, as you can see it's it just blends all right next up indices this is where we go into even a more powerful ways to kind of design your vertices and your triangles um, so again okay, let's do let's add another offset so we have this one the center is here right then we have one 200 pixels to the right uh, then we have one 200 pixels right and 200 pixels down, right? So this one. Okay. So we'll do another one that is a zero to the right, sorry, and 200 to, to the down. And now uh, and this will happen to you all, all the time when you're talk, to working with vertices. Things will like disappear. And the reason here is um, that our positions and our color lengths don't match which is why which is because we just added a vertex and we didn't add a color to it so let's add a color that is something different than the the rest of them and now we have but you shouldn't be surprised right there this the whole thing it's it's always just one two three so of course even if we added a new vertex nothing changed but you can have indices, plural of index, and you can do things like, well, you can do things like one, two, one, basically the first, the second, and the third um, index, uh, which is exactly what just happened here. But I could do things like the first, the second, and the fourth index. And we now you know, do this, right? So indices is basically um, my, uh, like, uh, my way of saying, okay, don't just go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three through the positions, but instead make triangles out of the, out of vertex number one, vertex number two, and so on and so forth, right? Um, so again, like if you, if you do like this, then it will be a triangle like that. So the first one, the center, the one, two, three, third one, this one, 200, 200, and the last one, right? It doesn't help that it's all zero index, but you, you probably get the idea. And you can have more indices than vertices <laughs> or lower positions, um, which which goes into this like more powerful way of doing things where uh, you might have maybe 100 points and you have those 100 points every frame, like they don't change, the points themselves don't change, but you change the indices, the, the you change the triangles that you, uh, you draw using those points. So for example, in our case, I have 
zero to three. And to complete a square, I could do zero, one, two, right? Zero, one, two. And yeah, we have this now. We have um, two triangles, right? Uh, we could um, we could do something else. We could do one, two, three, <clears throat> and we have this weird thing. One, two, three. Right. So right now we have uh, we have used vertices in its normal constructor, and what I want to show now is and I'm putting it into uh, the next level by using vertices.raw all right so let's do var vertices and now vertices is actually i'm just go going to keep it there uh, for my own reference raw all right vertex mode is still triangles and positions is and as you can see it's a float 32 list now, positions, I'm going to do them here. Final positions is a float 32 list of length four. Hi, Philip here from the future. I am just editing the talk and I am realizing that I didn't give enough space to type the data, which is things like float 32 list and so on and so this is me basically giving a little insert talk just about type data uh, because it's important i think even if you're not using vertices.raw you will learn that type data can be powerful it's it's a very uh, powerful uh, but more importantly performant way to work with a list of numbers right so if you've used Dart, you know how to make a, and work with lists of numbers. That's just, you know, just uh, this is a list of numbers. If it's a list of doubles. You could have another one, uh, which would be integers, which would be something like one, two, three, and blah, 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 right? Um, and you can, you can make sure, absolutely sure that this is a list of integers. Uh, well, if you create if you import dart colon type data which is part of the standard dart library so you can you, you don't need to import or um, have a dependency on any other package you can create lists like this float 32 list of length 42 for example right or 142 you know it doesn't care um, this is it works exactly the same as the list on the top. So you could do a0 equals 3.14. Um, you can print a1, which by the way will be zero because if you, when you create a new list or any new type of data, uh, it will come as a, with, with zeros everywhere, everywhere. But fundamentally, so from your perspective, it could look very similar to just a normal list, but it's fundamentally different because it is a chunk and in the, in, in the internals, it is a chunk of bytes. Now, bytes are kind of the lowest element that you can work with in computer, in, with computers, right? You could, you could say, oh, no, no, it's bits, but you can't create or allocate memory for just one bit. It needs to be at least a byte. Byte is eight bits. And so uh, the kind of the lowest thing that you can work with in with, with computer is, is really a byte, right? Uh, and if even though this for, from the perspective of you as a Dart developer, it looks and works like list. In the in the internals, it really is a chunk of memory somewhere, and it is very efficient also for uh, the pr program itself to um, uh, to work with this uh, list of numbers because it knows that it's 
um, you know, this size, it knows if, if you want to go to the element in the middle of the list, it can calculate very quickly exactly where that element is in the memory. It can read it uh, straight from there, right? And so you'll see that whatever you have, for example, you can have a var b is uint list of length three, uh, which u means um, unsigned. So it can go below zero. You can have 464, you can have all these other, other versions of, of type data. But both A and B have one thing in common, they're type data and therefore they are backed by this buffer. This is literally what I was just talking to you about. This is the buffer is the chunk of memory somewhere that you are looking at through the lens of the Flutter 32 list. You can even do things like you can be a buffer as uh, what uh, int 64 list, right? Which I wouldn't recommend because now you're looking at uh, something that you were previously assigning floats to, and now you're looking at the same chunk of memory as if it were 64 bit integers, right? And because it's 64 bit, uh, it's no longer uh, the size of 142, but it's uh, half of that because uh, 32 flow 32 list that's four bytes per number, and in 64 list that's eight bytes per number, right? Eight times eight uh, bits equals 64. Anyway, so you, you have this like very powerful and very low level way of, of working with very large, often very large lists of numbers. And the other thing is that the buffer the, is a chunk of data that you can then like put into a file or something like this. It's, it's serializable, but not in a way where you kind of have to work on it to serialize it into like a JSON or something like this. But it is literally, the, the, what you're working with is the data. It's, it, it, it's the bytes that you will then either write somewhere or um, you know throw away if you don't need it. It also means that if you, for example, prepare your data in advance, like in a file or in a network file, uh, you will immediately be able to work with it. Like you load it from the disk and instead of somehow massaging it into some kind of a thing, you can immediately work with those bytes through the lens of the type data. So anyway, so that's type data and the rest of the talk follows. So what we can do is uh, or we, what we need to do if we use vertices raw, we need to put things into this positions list, right? Before we had a list of offsets, now we have a list of numbers. So now you think, mm, okay, well, how do I, like offsets is two numbers, right? Offset is here, left and right. The center is also left, I mean left and top, or X and Y. And so this is a list of pairs. So uh, how do I do it best? I think from list, right? This kind of uh, defeats the purpose of having a float 32 bit here, but I, I want to show it like didactically, it makes sense. You can have a list and let's say we start at, I don't know, 200, 200. That's one offset. And then 300, 200 is another and then 200, 300 is another. That's easiest for me. And now you have a triangle here, right? So 
it's weird. It's it's kind of uh, you have to think about it because like they are. <clears throat> there's no way to you know like like uh, this isn't a, a an object anymore. It's just two numbers next to each other, and this one means first vertex x coordinate, first vertex y coordinate, second vertex x, second vertex y, and so on and so forth. And that's that's how it works. So you can you can just have uh, a bunch of these. Um, what makes this actually performant in the case of what I saw, uh, what I showed you in the first uh, few minutes of this talk, when I <clears throat> showed the different you know uh, versions of the same snow thing. What makes this fast is that you can create this one huge float thirty two list when you start the painter, for example, or you can bring it from an isolate or um, uh, you can read it from a file. So you already have this and on every frame, you start frame, you already have this huge list. That, that list does not need to be garbage collected every frame. It does not need to, be, need to be created every frame. It's there and it's just a bunch of numbers. <clears throat> And it's already in the same format that you will then, then draw vertices will then send to uh, to Skia, right? So uh, if you see that it's just canvas draw vertices, it's like a native call, and it takes these vertices. And as I said before, if you use the normal vertices um, constructor, it will basically do the work for you. But sometimes you don't want that work to be done for you. And the same thing applies here as with other things. So like, like I, I can add another <clears throat> that would be 200, 300. Uh, and it does not show because... Wait, 200, 300, do we, do we have it? 200, 200, 300, 200, 200, 300 and 300, 300, right? We, we made it a little differently. Um, so, so now we have four vertices or positions and uh, we can use uh, indices instead. So final indices and with raw it's again something different and it's a uint16 list. And let's do uh, six. So this time I'll I'll do it uh, a, a different way. So we I created a new list of unsigned integers, sixteen bits, and uh, I'm going to use it as indices. Now if I save, there's nothing, right? Because uh, we we didn't assign any triangle. Uh, but I can do like indices zero equals <clears throat> zero indices one and two uh, I don't know could be well one and two that's easiest and now we have that right and then uh, I can add three four five and this would be Maybe one, two, three, right? And lastly, colors is the same thing. Like colors is, an, this is integer 32 list. And uh, uh, each color is represented not by color like this, but it's represented by this number, which is FF is full opacity, red, green, blue. Right, and I, I think you get the idea. We can we could just like uh, grab this and, and put it here. Uh, so now, if I look at a uh, talk page, if I look at something like that that where I uh, played a, around a little bit already, uh, you can see. Okay, so am I using floats? I mean, uh, drawer disease row? I'm not. Uh, but like, you can imagine when I have drawer 
raw, um, I could uh, I could create just yeah one list of a lot of positions, right? Right. I'm not using this one, but but uh, imagine that I use that, and then every frame I maybe change a little bit one of the numbers or a few of the numbers, and then I just use that same thing, that that same. <clears throat> list of positions and list of indices and list of colors and I send it to the uh, send it to canvas and it it gets rendered all right so while we're here so this is you can you can just see how okay like you can you can rotate things but you nothing here should be too surprising uh, about this right so procedurally we generate the center vertex and the one two three four uh, around them and then we create procedurally again the the indices and then we use the colors actually let me uh, let me do that and I, now i can do like six right so so procedurally generated both the indices and the indices vertices and the indices wow and uh, as you can see here, we can actually, we are using paint uh, that is, that has the flutter forward kind of trailer image in it. Paint, as you probably know in flutter, can be anything. It doesn't need to be just color. It could be a gradient. It could be an image. And so this is draw vertices with a paint of image instead of the colors there. All right, and bonus point uh, for, for me is kind of similar to draw vertices is draw points. Uh, draw points clearly draws points. Um, and it's, well, actually it draws more than that, uh, but it's similar in that you will just uh, send a bunch of data to canvas or to Skia or whatever, and it will just paint it for you instead of going this back and forth. That's kind of the, the reason why draw vertices and draw points is fast, is that you will just send this whole bunch of data and um, the raster thread and everything else will have it ready so that they can kind of send it uh, to the GPU, basically, right? It's how a lot of performance optimizations in games, for example, and in any rendering gets made, is instead of doing like, draw this line, draw this line, draw this line, you will be like, here's a 10,000 lines that I want you to draw. And then GPU can do this pretty quickly because that's what GPU does. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, another reason why draw points is very similar to draw vertices is that it has uh, its cousin draw raw points, which is exactly like vertices.raw. Like instead of a list of offsets, you have a full, is it a float32 list again or something like this? And you just do that, right? So uh, draw points does this, uh, you have a mode and I don't know if you can see it, but they, basically we have this paint, which has a color of red and we have a stroke width of five. We can do 50. Um, and now we have two big dots here. That's that's all we can do here. We can, of course, add another. Yep, right. So so that's that's points. Uh, what could trip you up is you have to specify stroke width because normally I think it's something like zero. Uh, you won't be able to see your points if you don't specify a bigger stroke width. So that, that's what you can do. Uh, now you can also say the point mode should be something else than points. It could be lines. And now this looks a lot similar to what you already know from draw vertices is that it will go pairwise and draw lines. Uh, because there's three elements, it will just get the first two pair, the first pair basically, and it will ignore the, the rest. And then there's also polygon, which is basically doing this, right? Like doing a line here and then line here, 
there. Um, and that's it. Like you can, you can of course do a lot with these kinds of things, um, and uh, it's also very performant. And there's raw, uh, a raw thing here too, which will not work, but it it gets flow 32 list. Cool. All right. So last thing that I want to show you is. Uh, where's the comparison page? That's three. Uh, this is the one that I showed you in profile mode at the start of the talk. And as you can see, this is the widget, and then you, there's canvas, and then there's drop vertices and drop vertices all. Now, this is um, kind of a puzzle for the for the people who love these kinds of things. For everyone else, it's a silly question. Uh, can you understand or can you um, give me the reason why when I go and add the count to about here, I suddenly get this craziness? By the way, there's a lot of, like if you work with vertices, you will, you will see things like this a lot because it's so easy to have a bug somewhere and then everything just kind of like explodes, right? So, but is there a reason you think that this code, uh, let's see, vertices, this, this one is not the raw painter, but it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter. Why, why would this code that uh, is working just fine here, why would it explode over here? Like, why are there these lines, basically? Um, so if you want to think about it yourself, then I encourage you to stop the video now and, and have a good think. And I will keep talking <clears throat> and giving you more hints. This one is hard, right? So so don't, uh, don't feel like uh, you should know this. Um, I, I couldn't, uh, I, I, at first when I saw it, I was like, well, would you, why would what, what happen? Actually, if you look at vertices here, nothing, sh like nothing here will tell you, okay, this, this is a problem. But as I said, vertices, this constructor will basically kind of call vertices.raw in, in the background, right? So even though I'm, I'm, uh, sending a list of integers. Uh, in fact, this list of integers is internally translated to a typed data list. So let's look at the raw part. Uh, so we now have indices, which are created here, and it's a unsigned integer 16 list. This is a um, this should give you a, a much stronger hint than, than anything else that I've uh, said so far. So again, feel free to stop uh, and think about it. Well, indices is how we tell what positions to, like from what positions to make a triangle, right? And as, long as it's something like, uh, I don't know, 10,000 or 11,000, there are, for every snowflake here, there are actually four, actually there are five, uh, the way I do it, uh, there are five vertices. Um, so we have 11,000 times five little vertices, and then in the in indices, uh, we say which ones to draw a triangle on. And the problem here is that as we are saying what indices we should, uh, here we, we are, we're saying like, hey, for this indices index, assign this number to it, and so on and so forth. The problem is, <clears throat> that it's you, you unsigned int 16. Now, if I have a look at unsigned int uh, 16 bit max value, 
it's 65,535. So as soon as there are more than 65,535 vertices, uh, this it will start, it will overflow. So what's happening here is that for in our program, uh, it will correctly say, hey, I want to make the triangle from 65,545 uh, uh, to 65,732 or something. But that 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 last thing will overflow into a, one of the first vertices in this whole thing. And it could be anywhere on the screen. So it will do these crazy triangles that will just span the whole uh, whole canvas. So that's why this, this is happening. Now, it's very easy <clears throat> to overcome this. If we were serious about this and if we wanted to fix this, we would just say, oh, you know what? After I've created this many positions, I will create the, like, I will just draw those and then I will create the next vertices row and draw those, right? Um, so yeah, that's that's another like a little thing that you need to be aware of um, with draw vertices. All right, I hope that I gave you a little bit of inspiration on what to do. Um, I, I understand and realize that this is a very niche kind of API and I hope it stays that way. I actually think that uh, for like, let, let's have a look at again, right? To the the comparison, if you have a look at the widget and how that is done, like this is clearly more readable than anything that, that I've showed you with, with the draw vertices, right? You have a stack and in the stack, you have a bunch of squares that are positioned by where they are and then it's rotated and it's a colored box and it has some width and weight. It's it's so so nice, right? Uh, but and if you have uh, something like this and if you don't have 12,000 of those uh, changing independently every frame, then please use this kind of uh, approach, right? If you need um, something where there's more things happening then still use canvas use canvas this is draw path it's fine it's it's fast enough it's it's fine right then if you really need to like you know uh do a bunch of calls and draw calls and everything like that uh then yeah draw vertices and draw vertices raw is what you might want to use but this is like one 0.1% of the use cases of Flutter. Just don't forget that, right? I do think this is the kind of API that like it kind of makes me happy. It's 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 exciting in a way because it's low level and you you really work with individual individual bytes and, and numbers and you know. So to me it's it's exciting, but I can understand that I'm uh that's not the case for everyone. With this talk, my main goal was to kind of make it easy for others uh, who are of the same kind of um, disposition to look at this and be like, oh, okay, so yeah, it's I understand how it works uh, and I will need to give it some time to understand it fully, but uh, it's not black magic. Uh, and for the others who are maybe not like you know into this at least yeah, now you know like there are things that are possible with with things like draw vertices and uh, they are actually really powerful and they unlock a bunch of potential but you probably don't know but you probably don't need this anyway thanks for your attention uh, thanks for watching this far and see you next time. Thank you.